the entire Old Testament announces the coming Messiah. St. Cyril of Alexandria says, the entirety of Moses' scripture reveals in an enigmatic way the mystery of Christ. The Messiah, his life and his work, even before his coming, was not unknown, being prophesied and pre-announced in an impressive detail. Quote of St. John Chrysostom, the New Testament was portrayed in the Old. That which was carried out here was prefigured there as a silhouette or a shadow. In addition to the theophanies of the fleshless logos and the prophecies which announce his incarnation, there are also prefigurements which pre-announced the mystery of Christ. Since Cyril of Alexandria. Christ himself, besides the prophecies which he says were fulfilled in his person, also relates events, types, and prefigurements in the Old Testament, which are to be realized in himself, for they prefigured relevant events in his life. For example, the sign of Jonah, the bronze should be serpent, uh, and others. All that which pertained to Christ, the prophets foretold for many years beforehand, and with great clarity, some with types and others with, with words. Indeed, there are two types of prophecies which foretell of the future, with words and deeds. There are many such types in the Old Testament and prophecies in actions and events. Actions and events. Now, St. Basil has some fantastic, uh, important words where I put it all in, in gold, yellow, make sure it's very clear on the screen for you. The heavenly revealer, that's how it's referred to in Greek, Ornophandros, the Ornophandros, the heavenly revealer or manifestation of heaven. St. Basil the Great refers to the types and their purposes. He says, the types pre-announced the divine as in a sketch, geographos. The type is, in other words, the revealing, should be revealing, of that which we await and faintly indicates the future by imitating the truth. Having made us accustomed to small flashes or small lights of truth, it leads us toward the great light of truth. Like the eyes which have grown accustomed to darkness. It's a beautiful imagery he has the saint here. So a man's in a dark room, right? Sees things as shadows. He sees the shadows of things. He doesn't clearly see things. Well, to come out of that darkness into the light is a process. And the Lord walks us out of that darkness into the light. First, we see the shadows of bodies. First, we are used to seeing the sun reflected in water so as to not immediately inflict upon us the vision of the invisible light, and then, then we are blinded, right? So there's a, there has to be, and this is the great compassion, the great economy of salvation, and the love of man, love for man of God for us, and, and the pedagogy, which people many times do not recognize, do not see, don't understand, that yes, there's the law, yes, there's clarity, yes, there's boundaries, but there's also the loving pedagogical preparation and fulfillment and then the working out of that in the new uh throughout the church and in the church that's what the ch church canons are for that's what the pastoral uh the, the the shepherd the pastor is all about the lord was the shepherd of the people of old he's guiding them step by step so just so the law having just as should be just as the law having a shadow of things to come and the typical teaching of the prophets, which is a dark utterance of the truth, have been devised means to train, have been designed, devised as means to train the eyes of the heart, in that hence the trans transition to the wisdom hidden in mystery of salvation will be made easy. So a couple typos here. Hopefully we'll, we'll, this is clear to you. Just as the law, I think it should be, having a, uh, having a shadow of things to come, and the typical teaching of the prophets, in other words, teaching with types, that's what that should be, which is a dark utterance of the truth, have been devised, have been as devised as means to train the hearts, the eyes of the heart. All right, so all those things are training the eyes of the heart, the types, the, the prophets, pedagogically bringing the people of God slowly, slowly into a, to, to be able to re receive the spirit, be able to, to graduate and to become able to embrace the spirit, having been devised uh, uh, 
it means to train the eyes of the heart in that hence the transition to the wisdom hidden the wisdom which was hidden in a mystery of salvation will be made easy that transition is made easier through this whole process so say Bez the great it's actually a mix of two translations uh partly my translation partly that which i found online so it's a it's probably needs another uh, go through but you can find the whole work of on the holy spirit free online but it i can't vouch for the translation uh unfortunately because it's not from an orthodox source or you can go to uh say vladimir seminary i think is publishes the uh the text uh, in translating the english on the holy spirit indeed in order for people to more easily accept the truth who is christ he prepares them with prophecies and the types when god is about to solve a problem which seems unbelievable to men he takes care to first present its type and shadow so that the reality will not come abruptly and they do not then they do not believe all right so again showing forth this amazing pedagogical love of man condescending emptying himself coming to our darkness and, and slowly bringing us out of the darkness and this is what we see with these types symbols and prefigurements that we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks types are foreannouncing or pre-announcing prophecies in which instead of words actions and objects uh instead of words actions and objects are utilized all right so types are actions and objects being utilized just instead of words they're still prophecies, but they're prophecies in actions and objects, and they they then signal future events. All right, so this is the difference between just a prophecy of a uh, uh, of one of the prophets and the actions or objects that are showing forth the coming Messiah and the and the fulfillment of uh, the economy of salvation. There are, however, also types and persons which prefigure and pre-announce. In an oblique manner, the Messiah and his work. All right, so it's oblique. Yes, it's a shadow. It's a silhouette of sorts, but it is clearly types and persons. So these types of Christ are persons of the Old Testament. We see in Adam, Melchizedek, Isaac, Joseph, etc. We're going to go through them, as I said earlier, in the next few weeks. We see... Uh, they have the likenesses or the similarities or, con or sometimes contradictions and characteristic actions which resemble and remind of the actions of Christ. So what, that, that's what we're going to unpack. Adam and Melchizedek, among all of the types, most accurately portray the prefigured Christ. We'll talk about that. The type resembles the archetype. And while not identifying with it entirely, does reveal and manifest the coming Messiah. The archetype Christ pre-exists, and yet, with regard to being revealed, is preceded by the type. So the archetype pre-exists, but in terms of revelation, he is preceded by the type. The type goes before and then the manifestation of the incarnation. With regard, St. Maximus the Confessor says, with regard to the essence, the truth precedes the types, of course. With regard to the manifestation, however, the types chronologically precede the truth. The type is manifest in order to partially reveal the archetype. The shadow announces the body that follows. And it occurs to me as I'm reading this to you, just how amazing and detailed and extensive is the work of the Asarkos or pre-incarnate Christ in the people of God in the Old Testament. And how is it possible that the leaders of the people in the days of our Lord did not see the fulfillment of all these types and pre symbols and prefigurements and prophecies. The types are elsewhere kinds of prophecies without words. They are more important than the prophecies because the persons and actions have greater significance than the words. That's very interesting. Let's repeat that. Types, symbols, prefigurements, they're more important than the prophecies. Have you, as as I thought, well, the prophecies, we must look at the prophecies and the fulfillment of the prophecies. Here they say, no, the they're more important than the prophecies because the persons and actions have greater significance than the words of the prophets. The, pro the symbols are worldless. Now, this this is a strange, this is what it is in Greek, modern Greek, and I, and I, I didn't have a chance to, to do some research here, but this is what 
examples here, symbols. Well, we have wordless animals. For instance, the lamb. We see that in the book of Revelation especially, but also in the Old Testament. The lamb of God. Objects, the bronze serpent, symbolize and indicate Christ and have many similarities with him. So these are extremely uh, important and, in fact, more important because they're talking about the person and the actions. The prefigurements and types are events of the Old Testament. We have Pascha, Jonah's three-day stay in the belly of the whale and his salvation therefrom, as you see here in the image, which proclaim beforehand the corresponding event of the divine economy. So that's the, one of the greatest examples, right? We see in this type and these symbols, this person, and what happened in the story of Jonah, the prefigurement, the, the, the proclamation, long before the fulfillment of Pascha of the three-day burial of the resurrection of Christ. Great example uh, for all of us, I think, can think of that when you say to somebody, well, what does it mean? Well, Jonah in the whale is one of the great examples. The New Testament clearly says that many historical events of the Old Testament are a shadow of things to come. Colossians 2.17. And figure of the true things, Hebrews 9.24. That is an outline or sketch, so to speak, of the future reality and a depiction of true things. God is accustomed to show to Abraham future events through types. He prefigured the descent of the Israelite people into Egypt by Abraham's own journey thither, what relates to the Christ by the sacrifice of Isaac, and what refers to the worship of the law by the sacrifice and quadru quadrupeds and birds. Abraham came to know the power of the Old and New Testaments through the types and especially through Melchizedek, who you have here on, this, on the screen, the image of Melchizedek. So we said earlier, Adam and Melchizedek's most important figures among all the figures in the Old Testament showing forth Christ. And so through the types and especially through Melchizedek, he saw and came to know the power of the new covenant long before. Many events of the divine economy were, no, were shown in types and prefigured in the Old Testament. Quoting here St. Gregory Palamas, homily 38 on the first ma gospel matins, the matinal gospel. All these things were figures of our holy sacraments. Has, have you ever thought of that? The, the, the the in the Old Testament we have figures of the sacraments. The sea foreshadowed the water of baptism. The cloud, the Holy Spirit mysteriously overshadowing from above the people being baptized. The food and drink, Christ's body and blood. Since through the mysterious energy of the Spirit, that rock carried the fount of water within it whenever it moved, pouring it forth copiously. It is rightly referred to by Paul as a spiritual rock and adopted as a figure of the body of Christ. This body, too, through the energy of the fullness of the Godhead dwelling within it, possesses the fount of eternal life and unstintingly offers to it, it to those who draw near in faith. So all of it is already prefigured in the Old Testament. All the mysteries of the church, the baptism, the chrismation, the communion, it's all prefigured. And St. Gregory presenting that to us. Thank you, St. Gregory. Fantastic. Father George Florovsky says the following, oh, a little bit further down. In the end, the entire Old Testament was a period of promises and anticipation, an age of testaments and prophecies. It was not only the prophets that were prophesying. The whole history was prophetic or a type, a prophetic sign. It hinted from beforehand at the coming fulfillment. So it is not only the prophets, but the entire history, the whole history of the people of God. This should really drive home the great error of this legalistic, moralistic approach uh, to many things in the scriptures. You have to see it holistically. You have to see the whole history. Uh, and you have to see it. the, the whole history as it is prophetic. Uh, everything that is, so many things in the Old Testament are pointing to the coming of the Messiah. When grace shone forth, the types and shadows did not vanish like a shadow in the light of the sun, but were rather enlightened 
and understood. And the type was associated with the essence. <clears throat> so grace coming forth, the New Testament did not eradicate or, 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 or decimate, but showed forth and gave understanding to the type, the shadow of the Old Testament. Before Christ's coming, the type existed but was incomprehensible, ultimately. The types, the antitipa, contained the figure, the typos, only, not the power. Just as in images, the image has the figure of the man, not the power. So that the reality and the type have some things in common with one another. For the figure is similar to the reality, but does not have its power. St. John Chrysostom on Hebrews homily 17. The figure is similar to the reality, points forth, but does not have the power. So that's why we read in the Acts and other places uh, that now the power of the Holy Spirit is what's been delivered to the to the apostles and to the church, which is came with the incarnation and the day of Pentecost. The type is related to the truth and proclaims it, but is neither fully identified with it nor has its power. Quote St. John Chrysostom now on the passage, I would not that ye should be ignorant, brethren. He says the following. Note the relation of the type with the truth and the superiority of the truth to the type. The type must not be wholly estranged from the truth, since then it would not be a type, nor again must it be equated to the truth, since thus it too would become the truth, but it must remain in its own measure, and neither have the whole truth nor be wholly deprived of it. And this is insignificant because, of course, Unfortunately, the Judaizers, for instance, and others throughout history, the various Judaizers, they would cling to the type, not understanding that it was not the truth, but it was pointing to the truth, which had arrived. So the Judaizers sought the early Gentiles to fulfill and keep the type, the circumcision, but they had the baptism, which was the fulfillment of the type. And so they showed themselves not to have wisdom, not to have the orthodox experience, not to be graduated into the fullness of the light. Why would you cling to the type when the truth, which the type pointed to, has now arrived? I see on this thing.